Jonathan here at Colfax Math. This video I'm gonna go over just a general overview of getting started in a wood shop. Um, it's for the woodworking precision exam and career tech ed. Um, the biggest issue in any shop is safety and I'm gonna go over some safety ideas, but nothing replaces in hands, hands-on training uh, and safe practices. Some of the other ideas I'll go over is measurement, uh, hand tools, power tools, wood joinery, fasteners, a uh, quick overview on CNC, and just some other ideas, just an overview on some of the pieces inside of a wood shop for woodworking. Again, let me reiterate, safety is always job number one. Safety has to come first. Watching a video certainly does not replace hands-on practice and safety training. So do not use any tool until you've been completely trained um, to use those tools safely. So we'll start with power tool identification. This tool right here is a table saw. This is the fence on the saw. This is a splitter in the back of the blade. This is called a miter gauge. This wheel in the front of the table saw is for blade height adjustment. And then around this side is for bevel adjustment. Table saw is kind of the workhorse tool in any shop. These tools are band saws, so the blades are large bands, that's why they're called band saws. This is a 14 inch band saw, that refers to the diameter of that wheel that the band runs on. How thick it is, how much sawdust it creates in the, in the cut is called the kerf of the blade. And then these teeth are uh, measured in how many teeth per inch and then the width of the blade. So that's a quarter inch blade, and I don't know, maybe seven TPI or teeth per inch. And this is a 14 inch bandsaw because the wheel that the blade runs on is 14 inches. And over here, this is called a miter saw. This is a really nice Festool saw. The slang term for a miter saw is a chop saw. Changing the angle in this plane right here is a miter versus changing the angle this way, knocking it over. It's called a bevel, and doing the two of them together is a compound cut. This is a radial arm saw. These tools over here are called scroll saws. They're for really fine cuts. You can see both the kerf and the width of the blade is really fine, including the number of teeth per inch. They recirculate back and forth or reciprocate back and forth to do really small radius curves. This is a drill press. Right there, you adjust the speed on the drill press while it's moving right here. This is a stop for the drill press. These are wooden lays for making anything round from a table leg to bowls. So anything that gets turned round and round and then carved is uh, done on a lathe. So bowls, vases, mallet handles, mallet heads, anything round is turned on a lathe. This tool right here is a different brand, a sliding chop saw. Again, this is called a, this is called a miter when you change this angle. On this one, if you loosen this up, Changing this direction is called a bevel. And the combination of a bevel and a miter together is a compound cut. This is a belt sander, a six inch wide belt sander. This is a disc sander. Key thoughts here is you always want the grit going down against your material and your material flat down on the tabletops. And on this, this thing's spinning this way. So you want the grit going down against your material on this side. Always keep your fingers far and away from any disc sander or any sander. This is another, this is a 12 inch disc sander here. Again, this is not a safety video. Um, this is just an overview. Do not use any of these tools until you've been trained properly. This is a spindle sander. It's called an oscillating spindle sander because it travels up and down so as not to burn the wood or the paper. So again, this is a spindle sander. 
And then these are router tables, and I have multiple router tables because uh, I use different bits on all of them. So this back thing would be the fence you could run material on. This router bit here is a flush trim bit with a bearing on the top. This is another router table. This is a T cutter. So you have to use the fence because there's no bearing on there. And then this router bit is also bearing, but it has a Roman OG edge cutter to it. So again, these are router tables. They're really just handheld routers mounted underneath a table. Okay. Another table saw. This is a disc sander, belt sander, larger belt sander. This right here is a four foot by eight foot CNC router. CNC stands for computer numeric control, and here's a computer that controls it. This tool right here is a joiner. Gives you a straight edge on a board, so this is a joiner. The knives are under the inside the bed there. This is a spi spiral heliarchal blade. That's a fence, in feed table, out feed table on this side, so this is out feed. This is an in feed table on the right side. This is a planer, and planer very similar to a joiner. On this side is an in-feed table. On the back side is the out-feed table of this planer. It gives you a flat plane on a piece of material. So this is a planer. One tool I do not have in here is a shaper, and a shaper is really a very large router. So it has a spinning bit to put edge details or to cut moldings on it. Now that I've gone over power tools in the shop, let me go over a few different types of joints um, to get wood to go together. This joint right here is a lap joint. So the first one right there is called a lap joint. And a couple reasons for good joinery. One is you wanna make as much surface area available for gluing as possible and that'll really increase your strength. And then the other is to create a shoulder so that for this joint to break, you would have to push that shoulder through the board. So again, that's a lap joint. Just going straight up like that, that's called a butt joint. If you have a groove cut out like this, that's called a rabbit. And this is a rabbit joint. The way I remember a rabbit is like the rabbit could jump up out of it versus this joint right here is called a dado. So this is a dado, this is a rabbit, a lap joint, again a butt joint just to go straight up. And then this right here, cutting these on 45 degree angles, this is called a miter joint. So that's a miter joint. And then after you have some of those basic joints down, then the next thing you have is ways to attach them. One way just to attach boards together is just to glue and clamp. Another is you could use pneumatic nails to put nails in there. Pneumatic means air driven. So you could um, put a couple nails in to hold it. And these right here are called pocket hole screws where you drill this recess and then the screw goes into the end here. So that's a few different ways to fasten the different joints together. Next, I'll just go over kind of a wide array of um, different types of wood. In general, there are three broad categories of wood. One is manufactured lumber, like plywood or oriented strand board or medium density fiber board. So that's a manufactured lumber. This is a plywood in the category of manufactured wood. This is species is dug fir. Um, Doug fir is in the category of softwoods. Softwoods are evergreens um, that keep their leaves year round. And then the third category is hardwood, and that's a deciduous tree, and this species is oak. So within the hardwood category, you might have, I don't know, 10, maybe a thousand different species, mahogany, cherry, black walnut, alder, oak, all of those are in the hardwood category. The next category is softwood. You might have pine, 
Douglas fir, cedar, those are all species within the softwood category. And then manufactured lumber is a product that's actually made in a factory like plywood, uh, oriented strand board, or MDF. So that's kind of categories of woods. A couple of other tools you need to recognize. This is a scratch awl. So this is for marking. This is a nail set for countersinking a nail. So if you have a nail sitting flush on the wood or proud sticking above the wood, you put that on it, hit it with a hammer, and then you would fill it. So again, this is called a nail set. And then also the difference between a knob and a pull. So in cabinetry, this is a pull and this is a knob. It has a single mount versus two mounts on a pull. Types of hinges. There are three types of hinges. This is just a regular butt hinge. And then the other two types are depending on the cabinets you have. So there are primarily two types of cabinets. One is an American style face frame cabinet that uses a surface mount hinge like this. And the other type of cabinet is a European style cabinet where the hinge is concealed inside the box and you can't see the hinge. So again, this is a concealed hinge. You don't see it. This is a European style hinge versus a face frame hinge or surface mount hinge for American style cabinets. A few big ideas in safety is under no circumstances do you ever go into a shop without safety glasses on. So safety glasses are always required. Never work with any chemicals until you've read their safety labels on the back. Make sure you have protective uh, masks and gloves if they're harmful chemicals. Never crowd anybody. No loose clothing, nothing that could get caught into a machine. Um, always closed-toed shoes in a shop. Never push or run or touch anybody in a shop. Um, I say this a lot, but safety is really the most important thing in any shop. And you don't learn safety uh, without being trained in it. So don't use any of these tools until you've been fully trained with them. A couple more ideas on the CNC router here. So the overall blanket of computer manufacturing is called CAM. That stands for Computer Assisted Manufacturing. Within the Computer Assisted Manufacturing category, there is CNC, and CNC stands for Computer Numeric Code. That is actually a coordinate system code, also known as G-code. It was invented by a few guys at MIT. So what you do is you create your vectors in a CAD program. CAD is Computer Assisted Drafting. Create your vectors, and what a vector is, is a way to travel from one point to another point. So all of your, your imagery is created in vectors. Those vectors are then post-processed into G-code, and then you come out here and you run the G-code on the actual CNC machine. So just about everything today is manufactured with some sort of CNC equipment, whether it's actually the tooling for an injection molded part or the actual part itself. Um, and the CNC is really what you're doing is you're creating these diagrams, which are vectors. You convert those into coordinates on the Cartesian coordinate plane, then you take all of those coordinates in G-code, and that G-code is actually what's run on the CNC machine. So that's an overview of CNC. Just a few hand tools. This is a hand saw right here. I don't know if you could see it, but this hand saw right here has knife-like teeth, and that's for cross-cutting. This hand saw here is actually a rip, and those teeth are much more like chisels. Um, so there's a big difference between cross-cutting, going across the grains, and ripping, running alongside the grains. This is just a square, versus this is a combination square. So this you could use for both 45s and 90s, and you could also um, move this around to keep offsets. This is a flat chisel with a bevel on it. If you can see that bevel, so that's a flat chisel with a bevel on it to get a flat surface versus this right here is a curved chisel for carving. So this curved chisel 
is for carving out um, depressions like in a bowl or a spoon or something like that. This is a marking gauge. You use that sharp point right there and you could scribe into your wood with it and set a, a certain width. Again, that is a marking gauge. And this right here is called a bench dog. How this bench dog works is it drops in one of these holes in the benches and then you pinch your board between the bench dog and the vise right here. So between that tab and here, you could clamp wood down with the bench dog and a wood vise. Big part of woodworking is clamping. There are a lot of different types of clamps. This clamp right here is a screw clamp, which gives you a much more force um, than a squeeze clamp. This is also a bar clamp, um, and this is perfect for cinching boards together for like a cutting board. This is only, this is just a spring clamp. The only way this is held, puts any pressure out is a little spring inside there. So a spring clamp versus a bar clamp. Here's another style of bar clamp right here. This is a little different than the other ones because you can't hold your materials down flat on there. And these are also squeeze clamps because they don't put that much force on your material. There's no threaded part to screw in to give you a lot of pressure. We've gone over the big stationary um, power tools like the table saw and band saw. And then after that, we went over just a few, a very small selection of hand, hand tools. And then additionally, there are handheld power tools. This handheld power tool right here is an orbital sander. It's orbital because this thing spins around in an orbit versus the square one's called a finish sander. So this gives you a little finer finish than an orbital, but an advantage of an orbital is it takes material off a little quicker. This tool right here is a belt sander. Very aggressive, takes off a lot of materials in a single pass. More aggressive than an orbital or a finished sander. Of the sandpaper is based on a grit, and it's a number of pieces of sand per square inch. So 100 grit is really coarse. 220 grit is pretty fine. 150 grit would be more like a medium grit of sandpaper. And that's for woodworking. If you're doing body work in an auto shop, they go up to 1,000, 2,000 grit. So the grit, the higher the number, the finer the sandpaper, the lower the number, um, the coarser. The more it takes off, but the more it scratches it up. The reason why you get burns on your sandpaper like this is that the way you dissipate heat from a project is by having the heat transferred to the sawdust and the sawdust removed. So if you're not moving your part around when you're sanding it, you're going to inevitably get burns like that. Some other handheld power tools is a drill driver. So this is a drill driver here for both drilling holes and driving screws in. Versus this is also a drill driver, but it is an impact drill driver. It has a hammering action to it. This tool right here is a handheld router. This is a pneumatic stapler, air-powered stapler. And this is a pneumatic nailer for nailing in. On the pneumatic side of things, this is compressed air. Uh, never have it anywhere near your head at all. Never push compressed air towards anybody. Compressed air can hurt you, could damage your eardrums, put things in your eyes, and can actually even inject air bubbles into your skin, so it always gets pushed away from you. All valves are the same. Perpendicular is always off. Parallel is always on. Measurement is essential in any shop. Um, usually done with a tape measure or a steel ruler. You're usually accurate to about 16th of an inch. And you can see here on this tape right here, that first little line is the 16th and an eighth, three sixteenths, four sixteenths, which is the equivalent of one quarter. So those are 16th inch marks. And you're only accurate probably to a 16th, possibly a 32nd with a ruler. After that, you go to thousandths of an inch and you measure thousandths of an inch with a dial caliper. So every little mark on this dial caliper is one thousandth of an inch, which is 0 
Another really important part of any shop is you're acquiring skills so you could get a job. And some of the most important parts about any sort of shop or any sort of job are what we call soft skills. Showing up on time, being courteous, wearing the appropriate attire, um, taking care of the paperwork that you're supposed to take care of, and be safe. So soft skills are as important as any other fine woodworking skills. Nobody really ever wants to work with somebody that they have to fix their mistakes for. All right, so hopefully this video is a little bit informative. It is a general overview of woodworking in a career tech ed pathway. Um, and it kind of goes along with the precision exam in the CTE, career technical education field of woodworking. Thank you for watching.